Hi, I'm Joe Gerzak. I'm the resident artist for um, Utrecht and Blick. I'm the head artist for the Blick Art Materials and the uh, brand manager for Utrecht Products. And uh, I'm here today to do a um, interior painting demonstration. And this uh, demonstration will be uh, about a, uh, a, a dining room area. I'm using a photograph to do it. Um, I did bring a couple examples, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but uh, I first came to uh, national recognition for my art through an article uh, in American Artists uh, written in 2006. And that article was painting interior light. Um, since then, I have developed uh, quite a following for my interior paintings. And uh, a lot of them in the beginning were focused on my family. Uh, today, what I do is uh, I, use, I use situations where if I see something that interests me the way that it's lit, I will uh, sometimes photograph it or do a quick sketch. But uh, today we're working on a photograph that happens to be uh, a neighbor across the street. One day I was going over there just before Thanksgiving two years ago just to say hi, and I saw a uh, beautiful setting with them uh, sitting at the table, and one of my neighbors was sitting there, and I told her, she knows I'm an artist, so I said, uh, can you just stay there for a minute? I want to photograph the situation in a really neat dining room with interesting lighting. Um, the, light, the lighting is a, a big effect for some of my paintings. Uh, this painting here is uh, a painting that I just recently did of my daughter and her friends um, at her birthday party. I'm very fascinated with uh, birthday party uh, situations. I've been photographing them for many years and, and doing a whole series of these. Uh, the Eller Ellerslie Museum in January will be uh, focused on, uh, on my interior paintings in New Jersey, the State Museum. Uh, I mean, the Trenton City Museum will be uh, hosting a show, and some of my interior paintings will be in there. This one will probably be in the show. Um, so it's not so much about the likeness of the people, but it is the entire atmosphere. What I really love about this painting in particular is the, uh, the, the balloons, the lightness of them floating at the top of the ceiling, and just that uh, Corvaggio light that uh, uh, emanates from the, from the cake itself. So the title of the painting is called uh, Illumination. And uh, so we have the figures surrounding, and what makes it interesting when you have a single source of light and you have several figures in the room, is that you have a variation of different uh, flesh tones and lighting, and all the old masters knew that, so it gave them uh, unity, having people, but variety in flesh tones and uh, treatment of figures as they surrounded light in a different way and it bounced off of them. This, this figure here, if you look at it very close up, is very, very abstract. <coughs> But when you go back a distance from it, it's really uh, beautifully just lit that way with the warm light that envelops the room from the cake, from the candlelight. And then over here on this side is very abstract. Uh, a figure, which is my mother-in-law, uh, barely recognizable as a figure, but still in there and enough to tell you that somebody was peeking through the doorway looking at the scene of what's going on there. And then another interesting twist to it is the outside uh, light, which is the uh, bluish gray evening light. So that's coming upon the scene as well from the outside. So you see the um, olive warmness uh, color inside, and then you see an opposing cooler light from the window. I love doing that in my interiors a lot and I can take advantage of that. This particular painting here is another painting of my daughter. She's very shy so she won't look into the camera, but that's fine with me uh, because I caught her in the uh, bathroom in an older house, 1949, 
And the bathroom has really never been updated. It has all the old uh, type of uh, fixtures and sink in there. And it just has a really interesting light in there uh, during the morning. And now it's coming through the window here. And her figure, again, is borderline. Uh, so if you look at the painting very closely, abstract, but it really does come together to feel the presence of that environment with the figure in there. I, I uh, originally started out just doing interiors with uh, no figures in there, but uh, and they're fine, but uh, it, putting a figure in the interior certainly adds to the dimensionality of it because it just gives it a, little, a lot more life. And of course, it, it just gives it a narrative that when a person's <coughs> in the room, it really makes it a narrative. Uh, some of the artists that I uh, have been inspired uh, from over the years that have painted interiors, uh, John Koch, a New York City painter, painted the upper class a lot. Uh, Andrew Wyeth, I love his uh, treatment of interiors. Uh, Walter Sickert, the British painter. Uh, uh, I really love Vuillard. Uh, Vuillard, the French painter, I, I I love his work and um, I love patterning that he did and in this particular painting I did have a pattern on the curtain here and some in the uh, dress that he was wearing so I take advantage of that. Um, these paintings also have a limited talent even though I brought a lot of colors today. Uh, I'll be doing this in acrylic but I would do the same exact treatment in oil regardless. Acrylic just allows you to progress with the painting a lot faster. I will eventually settle down into a limited palette of colors for this painting that we're going to do today. That I'm going to do. But um, I tried to do that, and for the main reason of creating a uh, environment, an automatically uh, a unison environment with the color mixtures. If you have a limited palette, it really uh, holds the atmosphere together in the painting. If you start expanding to um, uh, numerous colors, it gets a little tricky to keep that environmental feeling um, in the pain. So, uh, without uh, further ado, I'm going to start working on the painting. Uh, what what I have today is the uh, gesso board from Ampersand. So it's a, a, a tempered board and it's coated on one side with gesso. Um, I, I really like the boards, uh, but when I'm working with uh, an acrylic uh, painting uh, on these boards or oil, I, I do an additional thing with them. I spray it with a uh, work, uh, not a work book, because crystal clear cryolite. I do that so that it cuts down on the absorption even further because these boards can be a little bit more absorbing. And in order to push around the wet medium, the acrylic, uh, there's a, a, a slight coating of a crystal clear crown. It's a plastic spray. Uh, and, um, this is the image that we're going to uh, be using today as reference. Uh, uh, it is uh, my neighbor. Uh, Michelle and uh, what we'll be doing is trying to create that environment in a square format painting uh, just as you see there. I already did another rendition of this. It's a, I didn't bring it today, but it's a painting that's a little bit longer. It includes her son and her, but today I've decided to revisit this subject because it's very interesting as a square, a square format as well. Okay, any questions? Painting. I'm going to start the painting um, with a very abstract. Uh, I'm going to do a quick pencil sketch just to get the feel of the space. But after that, I'm going to wash it in very abstractly. This is more or less just a uh, uh, getting the getting the feel for the, the uh, space first and where, where I want to uh, compose and then I'll kind of like uh, this you know I'll cover over a lot of this but there's just a guideline in the field in the beginning I'm using the golden uh, ratio kind of 
uh, cross sections here just to find out a uh, sweet spot where we want uh, figure. I'm going to do some diagonals here first just to see where they are. And I think I'm going to do. Tables setting there like that. Um, we're also going to. So uh, I have that worked out there so you can just see the, uh, the, the rough sketch. I hope it comes up good on the camera. But that basically, uh, what I like to do is I like to uh, wet the surface a little bit in the beginning just to give the board a little drink. And then I'm going to actually just mix colors up and then try to get a some sort of gen generality of the atmosphere that's here trying to mix some colors that I think will be in there in the end so I'm just taking right now the yellow ochre the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue and I'm going to start putting them on as a as a wash. Just try to get them on there. Now I can see the pencil underneath. Um, And I'll just I'll just work that in. I'll just go to that's why I have the gloves on in the beginning. Not that it's dangerous, but I just didn't want to get all the paint on my hands. And um, I'll try to wipe out some of this uh, paint as it's as it's settling in to the board right now and dealing with that right in the beginning. So right away, I have an atmosphere developing. You can see all the drips. I love that. Maybe some of them will show up in the end of the painting. I'm not sure yet. I don't think too much about that. It's sort of very abstract right now. And I'll be in an abstract mode for the beginning part of the painting. I just take a white cloth, no paper towels. It's good, save the environment as well. But just use a, a white uh, cloth, it could be a t-shirt, whatever, rag, um, and uh, I'm just going to start wiping out the light right away in the beginning. So right away, of course, the brightest spot in the painting is the uh, where the lamp area is, so I'm going to try to preserve that right in the beginning. And because I wet the surface, it does make the um, lifting of this pretty easy. And because the crystal clear cryolin was sprayed on there, again, makes it very favorable for the acrylic. The figure is right here, so I'm butting the light up against the figure and possibly around it just to know where it is. You might not be able to see that that well right now with the camera, but I hope you can. And then there's another lamp going back in space here, but I don't think that one will be lit because in the photo it's off and I kind of like that variation. There is also light in the mirror that's on the wall, that beautiful oval mirror that's on the wall. I'm trying to get that out of it. You could already see it's very interesting to start cutting out the light in the painting. And then there's these little, uh, I'm not going to do little 
small pieces of light right now. But there are candle light, which I can go back in with more opaque color and put that in later. I'm not gonna focus on that right now. But I will lighten the wall color. So you can you can lift it up in varied degrees as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lift up the color in varied degrees. I'm not pressing as hard and I'm lifting up some of the the, the uh, color or the wash to get a little bit lighter wall color. So a lot, a lot can be established just with the rag, just with the wash in the beginning. You can really get a lot of this um, set in place and really start to actually develop a pretty interesting painting right from the beginning. There are all various little pieces of light on the table, but again, I'm not going to get into all that broken little space yet because then if I start doing that, I'll get away from the abstraction of it. And I don't want to do that in the beginning of the painting. I want to avoid that. I want to stay as general as possible in the beginning. And I'm trying to keep my verticals good, so there's the window space, and I'm making sure that you know I have stuff that's parallel to the sides. It could bend a little bit at times, but in this particular painting, I'm going to make sure the verticals are set. And you have an angle for the table, so I'm using the wiping to even draw with. I'm using this idea of wiping out I really want to retain that brightness here because when, if I go to put color over the white of the board it'll even be that much brighter or luminous in the end okay So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that now. So we have a very abstract uh, denotation of where things are. And then we'll just start to create more abstraction on top of that. So uh, what does Joe Gerzak do? Joe Gerzak is a uh, abstract realist. So what does that mean? I start from very abstract and then I bring it into focus in the areas where I feel are most important and some areas will remain more or less uh, abstract at the end of the painting. But the overall sense, as you saw <coughs> in those two examples, are uh, the representational works. But then when you look at areas, they become very abstract. So I'm just letting this uh, set up a little bit here, and then uh, I'm going to start to work it. In. And I'm going to look for some darker shapes in the table. I'm going to take a. Uh, it looks like a, like a number six, um, just flat brush, and I'm going to develop some of the figure in here because that's a, a dark as part of the painting. So I'm going to take. Um, the Payne's gray and the burnt sienna together, and a little bit of the blue. And I'm going to start to denote where that darker uh, part is for the figure. the table. I'm just trying to paint uh, abstract shapes around where the figure is. I'm going to connect the hair. And a lot of times um, I get a likeness of the person without any uh, detail, which I love. You know, you don't need, it just proves the point, you don't need a lot of detail to say that, hey, it's this person or that person. You know, 
lot of times you can recognize the people in my paintings just because of the the shapes, getting the accurate shape, not the detail, which is very good for students to understand that. And, and, and per, plus, uh, the power of the suggestion makes the painting much more powerful anyway. So uh, then I've just taken variations of these mixtures and I'm going to develop around it to figure I'm going to work my way out to other parts of the painting. And before you know it, all these pieces start to assemble some sort of space, some sort of uh, resemblance of things that are happening. and light. See what's happening? Very interesting. That way. And what I'm going to do, and I really love doing this, I'm going to take out this uh, light portrait pink. I started using this now instead of white paint to get the lighter parts. It's, it's a tone that's light enough to tint stuff, but it's not a straight white. So it brings stuff up, but in a controlled fashion, it's not so, it's not going to tint it really powerful. It's going to be a little bit more subtle. I'm going to use that on the table, the portrait paint color. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue, and I'm, going to get a re I'm already getting a really beautiful uh, mixture here. You can see that mixture. It's kind of like a grayish mixture. Uh, so I'm going to work that in as well right now. So I'm start to place this in. Look at that. It's really beautiful. So we already had the blue as part of the painting, so the pink just helps stay with the atmosphere because it's low light in the table. And that'll uh, pay off later as we start to put more of this painting together. The other thing that I want to point out, Walter Sickert, the famous British painter, the thing that made his paintings work so well, and Bouillard, the French painter, uh, is that they let some of the previous layers show through on the bottom. That's exactly what I'm going to do, people. I am going to leave some of that beautiful uh, tone showing through on the bottom. So we're not going to fully cover that either. I'm aware of that as well. So you can see uh, very, very simple and kind of on the crude side, but really beautiful. It already has an interesting composition. And what I'm going to do is take the yellow ochre now and tint that with the portrait paint instead of white. And I'm going to use that for the wall color. And I'm going to start to develop that. And I'm still leaving some of that um, color that originally was put on 
in the background. So you can see how it's starting to unify the pain really in a beautiful way. That acrylic stays a lot wet a long, long time, doesn't it? Uh, they're, they're, they're drying pretty fast because we're talking about my third layer already. Yeah. So the acrylic's set up pretty quick this way. Uh -huh. It's so nice, it's rest, nice to have it a little bit less absorbent, so it gives you a little bit more time to manipulate it. I see. So this wall is going to be a little bit more in shadow. And it's kind of like the color that I like on the table there. Uh, it's a neutral color, an indescript color. Those neutral colors are really beautiful to use. So what I'm going to do is use that as well on this wall here to subdue that because it's not getting the direct light. Even though the lamp is by it, it's not striking that wall. There's a lot of shadow up here in this area. So we're going to take that tone down further up here. Again, that'll help increase the light by the lamp as well. Just getting that wonderful play of light. And down here in this, uh, over here in this part, um, right after the figure, the wall is also more subdued because it's going to be less light again. It's going away from the lamp. So I'll put that in as well. So we already have a really nice design and a nice atmospheric approach here. And the rest is all up to how far you want to take it. Now, if I was, had students in my class and I'm teaching them, I would be happy if they got even this far and learned to develop a painting as a whole together before worried about any details. I am going to introduce cadmium red hue. Cadmium red hue. I'm going to put that there too now. I see I want to put that on the, um, the window part. I'm still using the same brush. I'm going to take that brush. I'm going to mix a little burnt sienna in there, a little of the pink, and see where I want to be with that. <coughs> I'm going to bring this tone up a little bit over here. It's a nice tone. Again, layers underneath are still showing through. And then um, I'm going to go to the, the um, I'm going to move to a little bit smaller brush. And I'm going to work on the face a little bit right now. Let's see what I'm going to take uh, a, a number two uh, Filbert brush. That. And I'm just going to tone down the, the, the flesh tone color. I'm going to take that down right now, put some tone in there, bring that flesh tone color down. Perfect. Using the port I use the portrait pink and a little bit of a blue in there. That's really nice. And then I'm going to put, also establish the hand on the table as well. Looks like there's another hand and then there's a piece of glass, the, the wine glass in front of, of the figure. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll just kind of merge them together and I'll put some objects in front of it. But again, keeping it very, very simple, moving around. I'm going to delineate the, the mirror a little bit. I'll come back to that. I'm going to delineate the mirror a little bit more. I just kind of go where, where I let the painting speak to me. I don't have a specific order 
of developing it. I, I looked at painting more as as I mature as an artist. I've been painting for four years, forty years. As I paint, I let the painting do more speaking to me. You know, I I wait and I interact with it. And where I feel I should be working, that's where I go. I don't overthink it. It's more intuitive. Um, that's what happens when you paint long enough. You become more intuitive with the work. And that's re that, that really brings a lot of joy as you're doing the painting. You're not overthinking it. You're really just in the creating zone. So that's where my head is. Going down that picture. And uh, you remember we said in the beginning, we, we weren't going to uh, bring up this lamp too much. So I'm going to tone down that lamp as well. I get that going down. Use that pink in there. I like the pink throughout the painting. It's really nice. I'm going to tone that down. I'll come back and develop this more a little bit, but I'm going to tone For now, it's going to be toned down. One will be lit, one more which is kind of nice, very easy. So you can see now by reducing that one lamp and just focusing on this area for the total light, the illumination effect is starting to happen. And you really do need to be aware of that in your interior paintings. Otherwise, if you don't have a, an area of real focal interest, um, it could get quite boring. So you gotta, you gotta really kind of plan that part out. Now the mirror, the mirror is reflecting the shot, the shadow side of the lamp, this lamp that's not lit in the, in the mirror. So that's what I'm putting in there. Look at it already, it's just, it comes together like that. It's so much fun to put it together like that. And then um, I'm just going around thinking about it. Now, if I squint at my photo, which I would be squinting at of interior in real life as well, looking for just dark uh, abstract shapes to put in uh, of interest, just breaking up spaces in an interesting way. Uh, I'm doing that as well now, thinking about that. I'm looking at how I can break the area into smaller, darker spaces, always work from larger, uh, very, very abstract shapes to a little bit more delineation as you move along in the painting. And a little direction on this, angle down. Looks like they have uh, blinds that are kind of like wooden color. We could leave it like that or we could put a, a window are in here, which I might do, and the bottom part of this might be the outside, and it might be called for like a little bit of a scene from the outside. We can play around with that. We'll come back to it. I'm going to put out in some of those uh, darker camps. There's many candles on the table because it was during Thanksgiving. And uh, so I'm taking the red and the blue together and I'm going to uh, put out some of these um, kind of really freely indicate in varied sizes and lengths um, some of the candles that would be in the table. And then we'll have some light generated from them eventually. Again, if I squint my eyes, I just see little shapes going on. And then by doing that, it makes it a lot easier to do the painting instead of, again, overthinking little things that could be in there, get highly focused on them, and really losing the point of the abstract realism. So a bottle is here, delineated in here. And we'll come back to that, we'll add more light as we go along. Because it's going to be very suggestive, very beautiful and suggestive like that. So then we're going to do a little, uh, of this bowl is just a little too small, so I don't like it that small. 
and would make the fall a lot bigger because it's Thanksgiving. We have a lot of food out, right? Come on. So we're going to put a lot of food, a, a bigger bowl here, make that interesting, and show more of it, the inside of it. So that's good. That cuts up that space better. And then we'll put another smaller object here. I don't even know what they are, but we're just going to put them on the table. And another bottle, two bottles on the table. Now we're getting some life into the uh, into the table itself. So I'm going to take the uh, ultramarine blue and the portrait pink, and it has this beautiful like um, picnic table atmosphere with lines in it, and those will be good for the painting as well. So we're going to develop those. Nice directional. And then uh, we're going to go crossways as well. Just suggestion, not everywhere. So you can really see the overall atmosphere of that painting from the very beginning, how abstract it started, and how it seems to be coming out of the mist now. It's getting a little bit refined and things are starting to happen and it really feels like a space and there's a person and you know you're getting a, a, like we spoke about in the beginning you're getting a narrative you know you're getting this whole narrative going and now you're wondering what what's going on here why is this person sitting there by himself and you know there's all this food and you're thinking about all those things And if you if in acrylic, you're going to have a lot more harder edge. So to deal with that, I don't know if you've been noticing, but um, I try to deal with the edges right away because acrylics are going to have be more edgy. So um, I, it took me a while to learn how to de develop the acrylics to look like oil paintings because I painted in oil for many many years. I still do, but I prefer the acrylics when I have to do something. Um, that has multi layers in a short amount of time. It really helps me to do that. But in order to do that, when you put down some marks with a with an acrylic uh, paint and brush, you kind of have to deal with it immediately. Otherwise, you won't get that softness. Plus, other and another thing that's really important is getting a, a brushes that are a little bit more worn out. Uh, because they leave interesting marks. Now we're going to suggest some of those uh, plates that we talked, spoke about on the wall. They're all there, but it's a matter of how many do we want to put in and how we want to do that. Well, there's one right up here. We'll put that in. Some interesting 
a look to the painting. I don't want to put too many by the head. It could look weird if like something's coming out of the head. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I can, um, and I will add a, uh, a little picture frame here like we spoke about. It's not in my reference, but I think it would be interesting to have another picture frame opposing this one coming out this side. Uh, just variation again and breaking up that, um, that compositional space over there. Now I'm going to uh, take a, a moment to show you the way that the palette is still organized because I think that's is very important when I'm teaching to show you uh, what those colors look like. It's still organized. You can see the many mixtures. But we have the portrait pink, the uh, cat orange hue, cadmium red hue, uh, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and the Payne's gray. And it's, again, it's the new trick uh, artist color, probably the professional brand that I'm using. And now I'm gonna put out the white. Okay, so I'm gonna put some white out now. Uh, just the titanium white. We're also going to introduce a cooler yellow. So I'm going to take a little lemon yellow out. Run up for those light tones, the lightest tones. We're going to mix that in with the orange. And we're going to start to paint that light into the paint. Again, just using a rag, one rag. And you can actually put soak this in a pail after you're done if you're working in acrylic and then you put it in the wash machine and wash it out so it makes you really don't need paper towels if you don't uh, you don't have to go through all that so i take the lemon yellow out um, with the titanium white a little bit of the hue the orange hue and <coughs> kind of thick okay start to put establish the lamp area, the lamp light. doesn't matter, the value is more important. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there. Poetry blue. And I'm getting thicker, more impasto with the paint. So you can see the setup uh, and the payoff because we did all that preparation. When I go to put in this light stuff, it really starts to jazz the painting up almost immediately. It's really beautiful in that way. It's very effective. The biggest thing that you learn over the years uh, as, a, as an artist, when you mature to become a veteran artist, is the economy of effort. You start planning out things ahead of time, and you you learn from your errors in the past how to get the payoff faster without less effort, without burning yourself out, and to really make it kind of interesting and effective with the less effort but more planning. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of light on the frame <coughs> over the uh, lamp. I 
and maybe there's a little bit of light in like the mat cord that's in there. there there's like a mat cord, so there's a little light there, just variation here. Really wonderful, very playful. And then there's a bottle in the in the foreground here. I'm gonna have to move to a smaller brush. Let's see. Probably a number one. Not so sure. It's a Princeton Catalyst brush. These are really good for detailing and they're they're very resilient. So I'm gonna take this brush and I'm going to start to work in some of these little objects on the table. So I'm going to take the blue, the ultramarine blue, a little bit of the lemon yellow. That'll give me a nice green, greenish bottle light color. Um, add a little bit of white to it. Let's see what we can get here. And I don't tend to fully mix my colors together as well. I leave them a little streaky. I love the effect that uh, Sargent, Soroya, Zorn, all those painters uh, looked very effortless uh, because they were very free in their uh, brush strokes and also in the way that they mixed the colors. They didn't, they didn't over mix them. There's a little bit of highlight on the top of the bottom. You'll, you'll find this in the uh, Russian Impressionist as well as the French, of course. Um, when you're, if, you're, if you leave a little streaking in the color, it's much more interesting to look at on the painting. There's a nice neutral label color here. And it just starts to um, cut out these, these abstract shapes are very fascinating because they actually start to bring out the objects on the table with little or hardly any detail, but they, they just look great like that. Sargent did this. We're just suggesting some of that in there. The candle light, uh, I'm going to need some cleaner white again. You're gonna, whenever, you, whenever you're going to do the really bright spots, you need some really clean, light color. And then I'm going I'm to go in and try to establish that. Now, the way to best establish that light on the candle is first start with a warmer tone, which is the orange and the white only. And we're going to put we're going to take most of it off on a rag and we're going to make it a little fuzzy. I'm going to give it even a little bit more orange. And we're going to get that a little bit fuzzy or streaky. A little flare. And then uh, we'll come back over that with some, something brighter. But it'll look really good in the end if you do it this way. I'm going to get that all in there. And then we put concentrated light and clean light of the lemon, the cooler yellow, on top of that. It'll look super bright. So these 
uh, uh, candles need holders. They just can't float in the air, even though they look kind of cool already. But we're going to put a little bit of the thing in holder for the table. A little. Very suggestive. I always say to the students, you have to learn how to draw well because eventually when you're painting, you have to draw with the brush and that's exactly what I'm doing now. We're not, no, no preliminary drawing, but we're really using our drawing skills to show some of these uh, candle holders, right? very spontaneous, right in the painting while we're moving along. So if you, if you really learn how to draw well, you can use that, that skill in your paintings. It is because they never seem to get the elliptical part right, but you have to envision the level that you're looking at. And you're, from my position when I took the photograph, I could see in the bowl more. So obviously this side of the bowl is going to receive more light because it's catching from the lamp. So I'm going to put more light on this side of the bowl and work my way across to the darker part of the ball. And you don't need a lot of information, but when you put it in, it has to be correct. So if, it's, if, it, if it looks right, nobody will ever question the amount of detail. Okay, that's worth repeating. If it looks right, nobody questions the amount of detail. If it doesn't look right, then people are like, what's going on there? Why does that look so odd? Uh, that's because the drawing is off and you have to go back and learn how to draw a little bit better. So this ball gets darker on this side. And there are all little lines at this point in here, cross hatched or whatever. We can see some definition to that now. And then there's light on, on this side of the ball and shadow on this side, so I'm going to bring the light here. I'm going to show that right now. And voila, here you go. You have a ball, and we're going to put a plate right next to it. There's a plate behind it here just starting to populate that table, make it interesting, right? Otherwise, if it was completely stark or even I made the bowl bigger, that helped in the composition. That was very important. That's what you have to do. You have to figure out what works for the painting, not oh, I didn't copy that bowl the exact size. No, that's not the attitude. Even if it's in real life, look at the thing and see if it needs to be adjusted to work for your painting or your composition. Then you're really painting. Okay, so I'm going to put this dark green in the bottle. wine glasses on the table as well. We need to take the gloves off now because they were, was really that was for the beginning part of the painting. Uh, I'm going to go to a smaller, even a smaller detail brush. This is, uh, these by the way are terrific brushes. Uh, I love them for acrylic. They're gray matters. They're by Jack Richardson. They're very, very good. They're really resilient and they make beautiful marks. So I'm going to use that um, to show the wine glasses. So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to start to put in those little details. Uh, you'll see all this when you come up at, at the end uh, of the painting. You'll see all these little things in here, the fun stuff. There's a big clearer bowl here, from what I can tell. And it's just nice. I got that uh, mixture of blue, a little
little bit of lemon yellow, so it's not bright, bright light, but it's kind of subdued, but you can tell it's reflecting, and it's part of the table where, you know. And again, very suggestive. Just to give some, some sort of feel about what's going on on the table. We said there was another bottle here. Go so we'll highlight on this one. There's also a little bit of delineation on the face with light coming from the opposite left side. It's balanced light here. So it's, it's giving a little bit of definition to this side of the face, which I like. It's really cool. I'm not going to go crazy with details on it. Um, I like it more suggestive. Number one, the people that buy the paintings, they like, they don't want to see an actual person, uh, oh, that was uh, Jack or uh, Lois or whoever. They want to just say, oh, that, that's a person in this environment. <coughs> They enjoy that more in the painting than, than saying that it's a certain such person, especially in this type of thing. It, we're, we're, it is an environmental painting, an atmosphere, an interior. I'm going to put a little light on this on this lampshade. Remember, we said we revisit this, but these brushes, these gray matter brushes, see how they really flow with the acrylic. back a little bit of light from here and I'm going to brush up this stuff. That way and I'm going to go out this way. Get a little more light here. Um, if I take um, a little bit lower value right next to the lamp, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lower the value down here behind the head and the lamp, just so that the lamp is really brilliant. And that's another little trick. That's Rembrandt. Rembrandt, we learned that all from Rembrandt. None of us did it, but he knew about that. So if you uh, put a little bit of darkness around the light objects, you automatically get really wonderful uh, light coming from it. So that really is cool there. And in fact, because I did that, I'm going to have to take that off the wall and make it a little bit darker. But that, that was a good uh, move for the painting because it increased the depth and it brought out the light on the lamp. And anytime you can do something like that, that, that was really good to do that. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to work up this mirror a little bit more. With the, with the lower brushes. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's, if it's got some sort of resemblance to what you have, for your reference and it reads okay in the painting, you're good, you're home free. You don't have to uh, labor over it so much. I'm gonna put this reflective uh, picture frame in there. Get that in there. A little bit of shadow for the lamp. And that really lit the mirror up now, look at that. So I'll go back and I'll emphasize that light in the mirror now. I'm going to strike this down with a loaded brush, the lemon yellow and the white. I'm going to put that down in a thick impasto way. Really beautiful there. Really. 
So now we have the light hitting the top of the frame, the light reflecting in the mirror. That all, all that business was really working for the painter. Okay. Now we're going to make a decision. Remember, we spoke about this earlier. Uh, what are we going to do with the window? So the window doesn't really exist, the reference for outside, but I painted these enough. So I'm going to take um, Payne's Gray and, and the Ultramarine Blue together. And we're going to try. If we don't like it, we can go back the other way. But I'm going to put some dark in here. to break this space up. And I'm not going to completely cover over either. But this is like, uh, would be looking outside. And we're going to see, we're going to bring it up here, and we're going to actually be able to put a shade on the window. Here's where your visual memory comes into play. See, now look how nice that looks. Um, what, from past experiences, uh, as you mature as an artist, you'll, you'll be able to recall some of these useful things for a painting that you're dealing with right now. And I always wondered how artists do that, but now that I have been painting for a longer time, I completely understand it becomes very valuable. Now that gives you a gateway to another space. We're going to put a lamp, uh, 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 a shade on the top. And that totally warm spot now is way more interactive with the painting by making that decision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lampshade that has a little bit, uh, it say it's a white shade, but it's getting away from the light. It'll have an orangey, a warmish tone to it. And we're going to put the light the, might be a little too bright. Let's see. We'll test it. Put some orange in there. Take it down a couple notches. So it's getting some of this light. Could even go down a little bit longer. But that's the beauty of acrylic. You can adjust it really well. That'll draw darker too. Well, you can see that added a lot to the painting and now we need to darken the sh shade so uh, just like I was telling you in the beginning you have to work the entire painting the whole time that you're doing you can't just work one little area and expect it to work out when I mean, you're work say you're working from this corner working across uh, that's a crazy way to paint you have to work the whole painting at once now I'm realizing that as the painting is speaking to me the, the shadow side of that the unlit lamp has to be darker. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to introduce ooh, a little too dark, Joseph. I'm going to put that in there and make that have a little bit more turn to it. And then we know it's not lit as well. And all these colors, like I said from the very beginning, are working because we have a small palette of color, so our mixtures are in unison with each other. And I don't really care for that. I want to warm that up for it. So I'm putting more orange in the gray. That's better. Much better. And that lamp, even though it's not lit, on the pedestal part of it, the base of it, it's getting light from the other lamp the reflective quality type. And there's also a couple little items on the table. Which are be nice to add. Just variations of brush things. Um, I'm going to subdue this a little bit more in here. This way the light in the mirror is even greater. But again, like we said before, like I said before, it's worth repeating. Um, uh, leaving the history of the first layers of the painting, uh, where you started from, in there, um, 
it, the overlapping of those colors keeps adding to the paint. So if you completely cover over something, what's the sense of putting it in there originally? So it really makes no sense. So uh, seeing some of that see through as you develop the painting really makes the painting much more engaging. Uh, this a particular spot for that plate is not working for me. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to go back to the wall color, the salmon wall color, whatever it was. I'm going to take this part out because I don't think those two spots next to each other look right. So I take that out. And I'm thinking about how the painting is going to finish now more. So then my, my brain starts working in that way. Um, I wanted to do something over here with this frame a little bit more. So then And that constant dialogue um, as you're developing as an artist will improve. It's just like muscles, you know, visually you uh, start to see things and understand what you need to do to get it done. Um, that's really important. I'm also feeling uh, this energy here, this orangey energy could be really good for the painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that a little bit. I like those dark spots there um, where the orange energy is. So I'm doing red and orange together with a little bit of Payne's gray. And I'm going to see if I can play with this a little bit more. And I think that's really good here, just feeling it. Not everywhere, but just putting some of that glow in there. And I want to put something in the bowl, so this front bowl, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of darkness in here, something to indicate something is in the bottom of it. And there's a little bit of light hitting uh, her shoulders, because she had a dark uh, suit jacket or something. little uh, blue plates have a little bit of uh, light reflecting on them so I'm going to look at that again abstractly and just try to delineate some something interesting on them to make them come alive a little bit. Well, that's good it breaks that up enough. I'll go back to that really thin little brush I don't do these on the top. And also these plates here. They're getting the light from the bottom. light 
in, you reduce it or value, you have a lower value, you're going to bring more light to other areas. So just those little marks like that, those little accents are helping the situation down here with the lamp. the uh, brake front, whatever it is in the back of her, and we'll warm that up a little bit more. So, I mean, and that's going to separate that from the figure. and make the chair behind her. And there's a highlight on it as well. There's also this furniture, probably take it out to the end now, take that one light away. That was good to do that. And then what I'm going to do is put a little bit of light on the chair, on the rim on the top. Definition there. Looking all around, see where I can increase depth now at this point. And the colors are still good on the palette. For as far as acrylics, if you put them out in thicker piles, uh, you'll find that you can blend them for quite some time. And I love this color that originally was here because it really feels like the light is hitting that wall. But to really emphasize that, I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to reduce this a little bit more. The acrylic lights that dry a little darker too, so you got to kind of go, you got to manipulate, navigate all that. I'm just going to cut out a little bit of the lampshade base. We can't really see it in the photograph at all, it's completely blown out from the photograph, so we have to have a little bit of delineation there. So I'm going to put a little bit of color into here and a little bit of shadow underneath it. Just so it feels like an object and not so abstract. That really works. It's good. And I'm going to go back over it with a very clean 
coat of the lemon yellow. And it, it, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but it gets very thick. It's getting very thick. Very pasta. Um, I'm going to put a wine glass in front of her. So it's just, it, it's almost, at, it's very abstract because it's only a little bit of light. And you can hardly see it, but it's there. Now with a we didn't do this in the demo yet, but with the dry brush on a, from the rag, I'm just going to blow out this area a little bit, just very lightly touch and kind of make it dry brush on there, mm -hmm. so it looks like it's flaring out, scumming. accent a little bit of the pattern on the table. A little bit of that blue is really nice in there. This is interesting, this very abstract stuff from the beginning of leaving that in the painting. That's what we talked about. Some of it might be left just from the very beginning. It's really beautiful there. that you were able to gain some uh, perspective on how to approach an interior. But this gives you a very nice atmosphere, a very loose, uh, structured 
painting, but it has a lot of dimension to it with the light. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thank oh, you great. Much.